Hello, Robert Bastian here from Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute. My subject is the two main methods for injection of botulinum toxin into the upper esophageal sphincter for retrograde cricovaryngeus dysfunction are CPD, the inability to burp, or just no burp, as it has been called on Reddit. If you simply want to know about the EMG injection, you can jump to the time code we'll indicate here. And if instead you want to begin with a bit of background in comparison with the other method of injection, then keep watching. So here's some background. You probably already know about what I call the big four symptoms of our CPD, the inability to burp, embarrassing, gurgling noises, bloating, often with abdominal distension and excessive flatulence. Commonly, but less universally, many also experience painful hiccups, nausea after eating, and that nausea is often a gaggy throat nausea, not necessarily abdominal queasiness. And then many have a feeling of shortness of breath that they can breathe to hear, but they can't fill fully because they're so full of air. Some have hypersalivation, early satiety, meaning they have to stop eating early, they can't finish a full meal, even constipation, sometimes there's even rib or back pain from all of the distension of air. So taken together, the symptoms can cause severe daily misery. Most people have tried in vain to get the diagnosis since RCPD was never described in detail as a complete syndrome until my initial publication with my colleague Melissa Smithson, now Melissa Wingo, in 2019. And the link for that publication is also below. And our publication also described the first successful treatment for this disorder, that's the Botox injection into the sphincter muscle. Now it's being offered by many physicians all over the world who have discovered our work. Now to date, the spring of 2025, I've treated nearly 1,100 patients from all 50 states and 26 countries. The count when we consider our group of three physicians here at Bastion Voice rises well over 2,000 cases. The vast majority have received Botox injections through esophagoscopy, where we directly visualize the muscle in the operating room under very brief general anesthesia. And until recently, that's been my primary method as well, mainly because many patients traveled such long distances and I wanted to be sure of absolute precision in targeting the muscle, the cricopharyngeus muscle. Now here's an uh, introduction to the EMG-guided Botox injection. I've also published an EMG-guided injection option, another link below, and initially I offered that mostly for patients within driving distance or those who specifically requested it. Over time, I've tried to perfect, perfect this method and have gained confidence that it is also uh, associated with a very high success rate. In fact, I now consider it virtually equivalent in effectiveness to the esophagoscopy approach. And now I only do EMG-guided injections and I leave the OR method to my two very capable colleagues who have both done hundreds in using that method. Now let me give you an example of how it can be useful, the EMG method. A recent patient from many states away had undergone four previous injections there with little to no benefit. My first injection using the EMG guidance, she got a great result. Now it's possible that her endoscopic, the through the mouth anatomy is very difficult since I never did her that way, I don't know. And there are also some anatomical reasons why this approach may be preferable, meaning the EMG may be preferable in certain cases. Another person had two procedures in the operating room, got great results, but then lost the benefit each time. So she's one of the unfortunate who don't get that one and done benefit that we get most of the time. So she elected to do an EMG guided injection for her third injection and again got a great result. There are also peer people with poor jaw opening, very short necks, large upper teeth, retrognathism, that kind of thing, and those people might be better served with an EMG-guided injection. So let's compare and contrast the two methods. Those who choose esophagoscopy come straight to Bastion Voice Institute from the airport or from their car trip on day one. 
they see one of our doctors have an office examination, a little mist up the nose, a skinny, skinny scope, a little bigger than this, but pretty small. They swallow some applesauce, uh, a cracker, some water. We have a detailed conversation, including how to maximize the chance that they will be one and done. And then they go to their nearby hotel or a family or friend. The next morning, they report to a nearby surgery center where they spend give or take two and a half hours. They arrive an hour and 15 minutes early to meet the nurse, the anesthesiologist, and the surgeon. We go back to the operating room for this very brief procedure. They awaken very rapidly in recovery room where most people become aware of a mild dry or sore throat. Sometimes people say it's about a three on a 10 point scale and often by the time they leave 30 minutes later, it's down to a two. And <clears throat> while we don't recommend any of these things, some go downtown to sightsee, some go to the airport, and some go to breakfast, I would say once out of 50 patients will write a prescription for a strong pain medicine due to their anatomy and the difficulty of doing the procedure. Most people leave without a prescription. They just take Tylenol, Tylenol and Motrin, or sometimes nothing at all. Whoever comes with you must accompany you from the surgery center. So it, it's it, to do the OR procedure, you have to come with a friend. And occasionally, people will uh, use care.com to, to help them on the day of the procedure to, to get them from the surgery center back to their hotel. The cost, I don't do the cost side of things, but I understand it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $4,000 from beginning to end. That's for people paying out of pocket. And my understanding is that that's an extremely good price compared with elsewhere. Now again, someone uh, must accompany you and burping doesn't start for between one and five days and then you practice, as I have described elsewhere, to try to achieve that one and done result, which is about four out of five people. Now what about the EMG method? Rather than your visit requiring an overnight, you could technically get everything done in one day's visit. It would even be possible to fly here, have the procedure and fly home all on one day. You would come straight to BBI from an airport or road trip, have the same examination and discussion I mentioned earlier, and then during the same visit, we can proceed immediately afterwards to a Botox injection right in the clinic. And then you could leave a short while later to return to the airport or begin driving home. For our main focus of this video, which is to, to describe what the EMG method is like, I think it might be easiest for me to act it out as if I'm the patient. So I'm going to kind of pantomime the procedure to give you a better idea of what it's like. So <clears throat> I'm sitting in a chair. I'm the patient now. And we've done the exam and uh, done all the talking we're going to do. So I come in, or the doctor comes in with a little uh, alcohol swab and swabs the neck. And then I'm sitting as the patient with my chin up. The doctor does that wiping with this disinfectant and then puts a small amount of local anesthetic into three different places using a very small cosmetic needle. So he might do an injection first low on the neck here, kind of to the side, just a little superficial, like a TB test idea, then another little injection low on the neck here, and then there's a midline injection. And that includes that sort of little sting in the skin but then uh, the, it, it isn't just the skin of the neck, but I put some liquid into the airway causing a cough and then a bitter taste. So I say, okay, you're going to cough right now. So I've got the needle, I've just done the little TB test kind of thing, and I say, okay, you're going to cough right now. And right as soon as I say now, the person kind of goes, <coughs> <coughs> and then you see their face do this because they say, ooh, that tastes terrible. So it's, a, it's obnoxious, it's, it's not painful, the part in the airway, but it's weird, it's quick, and it tastes very bad. Then after about five minutes, I return to inject the actual cricopharyngeus muscle. That's the key step. So here's how the Botox part goes. Uh, first of all, I'm going to use a little e uh, EMG device. I'm going to put some stickers on the side of the neck. They're like EKG pads. 
little stickers uh, connected to these little wires, and then now the person is ready for the injection. Uh, I'm the person, and I'm going to begin typically in the midline because I think that's perhaps the easiest uh, one for patients to tolerate. So I come in with the needle and the EMG is making little little noises. And so I'm doing the injection and their eyes are wide open because they're not sure what to expect. And they're hear, hearing this little noise from the EMG machine and they're kind of doing this and da da da, da and I'm in about this long and maybe moving the needle a little bit and making sure of my place and I, then send it a slightly different direction, and you're mostly numb in there, but feeling some little pressure, and and then I finish, and I say, so how was that? And the patient says, whoa, that was interesting. I was feeling things in places I've never felt before, and there was kind of pressure, and it's like a little bit intense, but not too bad. I, you know, I don't want to do that every day, but not terrible. So I've got a little different. Uh, method than I used to use back at the beginning. And so I think it's gotten a little easier to tolerate than it was in my early cases. And even the tougher cases, the people who complain a little bit more, the discomfort is temporary, temporary and most of them tell me that it was absolutely worth it for the long-term results. And keep in mind, they didn't have an EMG, they didn't have to change, they didn't have to bring anyone with them. Uh, they can drive home now by themselves. So you have to kind of balance that, that uh, even for that top patient, uh, those advantages. All right, now, of the dozens of EMG-guided injections, I think I've maybe given a very short-acting sedative to one particularly anxious person. So that's another option, a, a little short-acting Valium kind of medication. But then someone would need to accompany you. So some closing thoughts. If you've been struggling with RCPD and haven't had success elsewhere, or if you've been hesitant about the operating room injection process for whatever reason, or if cost is an issue because you're paying out of pocket, uh, or you've done it elsewhere without success, or have difficult anatomy or phobia of the OR, just know that EMG-guided Botox injection is an excellent option. The treatment is fast, effective, and it's backed now by a lot of experience. Thank you for watching and feel free to comment uh, in, uh, to the video or if you have questions. Thank you again for watching.